Hello, this video will provide an overview for students of how to create a video using UJ. UJ is a video creation and hosting platform that you might use to view your instructor videos as well as create your own videos for a project or whatnot. So using this product you can create a video using your webcam which is just going to record only you to record only your screen or to record both your webcam and your screen. You can also edit your video by trimming certain parts or adding in bookmarks so that the viewer can jump to certain parts of your video without having to rewatch the entire thing. You can also add in quiz questions to your video as well as get the link to put it inside or outside to make it viewable inside or outside of Brightspace by D2L. If you're going to be logging into UJ outside of D2L, you want to do it through this website, which is gordonstate.uja.com. If you're using the website outside of Brightspace by D2L, you would want to just come to this, uh, this link at the top and choose Gordon State College Single Sign-On, choose Login, and then log in with your Gordon email, username, and password to enter to your media library. In most cases, however, you'll be getting to UJ for within Brightspace by D2L. So you would want to navigate to any course that you have access to, go to Tools and Resources, and then UJ Media Library. This is where it will show videos that have been shared with you, um, or it will also show videos that you have created. So in this case, the student hasn't created any videos yet. So we can either create our own recording, or we can go to manage media and upload recordings such as maybe an mp4 or something that we've already created into our UJ Media Library. So let's say we've created a video on our phone or somewhere else and we have it saved to our computer and we want to upload it into the UJ Media Library. We would just choose manage media, we would choose upload, video, and then we would browse it from our computer. As the video uploads, notice that you'll see a processing icon. It's not until you see the thumbnail of the video um, that you know that it has fully processed. In the meantime, there are some other um, items you might choose to upload into your UJ Media Library. So under Upload, we can actually upload audio files like MP3s, we can upload documents, or we can upload links such as pulling in a YouTube video. Additionally, if you're going to be making lots of videos, you might choose to organize them in folders. So you could just create a new folder and give it a name, maybe the certain class number or topic that you're discussing, and then choose to move your videos into that particular folder just to help organize them. For every video that you upload or create, you can hover over the thumbnail and see your different options for playing it, for publishing it, for deleting it, or editing it. But before I go into the specifics of what you can do with an uploaded video, let's go ahead and create our own recording. So we'll choose Create up here at the top, and notice we have two types of recorders. We have the downloaded recorder that will uh, exist as an application on your computer. You do have to have local admin rights to be able to download this, um, and your computer has to be able to, to download software. Um, if you want a quicker and easier way, then you can use the browser capture, which just opens it from any computer that is connected to internet um, to the internet, and you can use it on any browser. Now, the downloaded um, recorder is more fully featured. It does have like a pause button and things like that, but the browser capture is more light, um, a light version, but it is um, a little bit quicker and easier to use. So in this case, we'll just use the browser capture, and then we'll go ahead and give our video a title. From there, we'll choose Start. And then it's going to pull open the Capture Studio. You do want to make sure to allow it to use your microphone and to use your webcam if you're going to be using either of those for your video. You would then want to choose what is going to be recorded. So if you're going to record your webcam or your camera, you would choose that. And then it should pull your camera stream. Again, you will have to allow for it to use your camera. And in this case, the recording would just be of you and your um, video. You can also choose to record your screen only. So you can choose screen, and then you'll be asked to choose which screen you would like to record if you have more than one screen. And you would allow for that. Or you can actually record both. So you could choose both, and it would record both your screen as well as your camera. 
So notice I have two different streams here, my camera and my video. You also want to make sure the correct microphone is selected. So here um, you, you might have two microphones. I have a headset, which is preferred if you uh, are in a busy area. This a headset will uh, allow you to have better audio. Uh, my webcam also has a built-in uh, microphone. So if you have more than one, you might want to choose uh, the preferred one. Um, and you might choose if you have more than one camera. You want to make sure you're choosing the correct one. But you do want to make sure that your uh, microphone is on and that your camera, if you're recording your video, is on. On. So you want to make sure both of those are blue. So in the case that you're working on a one-screened computer, which is probably the case if you're working on a laptop or maybe any standard computer, and when you choose to share your screen, you'll choose screen here, and then you'll select your screen. Now when you do that, notice you're going to see something that looks like a screen within a screen within a screen within a screen. This lets you know that you are sharing your um, screen correctly because it is recording what is behind your screen. So if you're doing this, you know you're doing it correctly and when you actually go to start your recording, you'll just pull in your video or whatever you're trying to record on top of it. So I know it kind of seems like right now that I'm not really sharing my screen, um, but I am and it does give me a message that says that I am um, currently sharing my screen. So now what we'll go ahead and do is we'll start the recording. And then now that it is recording, we see that it's counting here. So that lets you know how long um, your video is going to be. So then I can actually pull up on top of my video whatever I'm going to show in my video. I can pull it up. I can go to you know my slideshow. I can go through my slides um, and continue so on and so forth with my video. And once I'm done recording on my PowerPoint, it may be that I want to bring up a web page or something else. Whatever I pull up on my screen is what is going to be um, shared in the process. So I'll just minimize this and maybe I want to go to a certain web page and I want to open that up and I want to walk my um, walk my classmates or, or whoever's watching my video through a web page. So again, it's whatever is going to be pulled up on this screen is what is going to be um, visible in your video. So once we get done with our recording, we'll just go back to our Ujo Media Browser. Um, notice now I see that my screen, uh, my video is being recorded and then my, my screen is being recorded. This is just the background of my screen. Um, we couldn't see it when I was actually recording my video, but brought up on top of it was my PowerPoint or my web page that was being displayed here. Um, notice there isn't a pause button here. When I choose this, I'm actually ending the recording. Um, now, it is okay that you can end your recording and you can go back and edit parts of your video. So it might be that you stumbled across something or you wanted to cut a certain part of your video out. You can do that in the editing process. So we're just going to choose end recording. I'm able to watch my video here. I can choose to download it as an MP4 if I want it outside of Uja, but at this point I want to actually upload it into Uja. So I'm going to choose upload. Now very important that you do let these blue lines go all the way across and you see a message saying that it has successfully uploaded. At that point you're able to actually go back to your media library and it will be uploading into your library. Now it will take a little while to process, um, but when you see the final thumbnail that lets you know that it has fully uploaded and you can begin to use it now. So back in the media library, I want to make sure to choose my media and then the one video I had put in a folder, but this is the video I just recorded. Notice it is still processing. And remember, if you need to get back to this area and can't find it, you can always go to tools and resources and use your media library and that will take you back to this main page, which is where all your videos are going to live. Also notice while it is processing, if I hover over my video, I see that I don't have many as many options as when it is fully uploaded. I have more editing features. So you do maybe want to wait a little while for it to finish processing. Now that my video has finished processing, notice I do have the edit feature now. So I'll choose to edit and it's going to take it into the video editor and this is where I can trim my video in case of um, certain points I'm wanting to trim out of it. 
So here we have our two dis different streams. We have our screen stream and we have our video stream. And so we would just move this to wherever we would like for it to go. And notice that there's not a lot of audio here. Um, and this will show you that, you know, maybe this is an area that I wanted to cut. So in order to make a cut, you would just um, hover your mouse over that with your playhead. You would choose your scissors icons and then you would just highlight in gray what you wanted to cut. So now that part of the video will be cut when we save it. It could be that I wanted to cut another part of it. So I'll just move my playhead to that area, choose cut, and then slide that over wherever it would need to go. And so when I save my videos, both of those will be cut. Um, what I also might want to do here, I'm going to turn on advanced edit mode, is add in some bookmarks. And this will allow uh, people watching my video to jump to different parts of the video um, without having to rewatch the whole thing. So these are actually called indexes. So we'll choose index. And then I'll put my playhead where I would like for the first index to be located. And I'll choose to add an index. And then here I might say, you know, whatever I would like, uh, what's being described at this part of the video. And then I would just move to a different part and I would add an index here. So for example, if I were uh, making a video about human anatomy, I might um, put bookmarks where I'm talking about, or I start talking about different parts of the body, overview of the lungs, overview of the heart, so that if a student wanted to only watch the part about the heart, they could just jump to that part of the video without having to rewatch um, the entire thing. All right. So once I've done, uh, once I'm finished adding in my indexes or bookmarks and I've finished trimming my video, I do want to make sure to save because none of these edits will take place unless you save. And then notice we can, it's going to try to save our video as a new video. It's going to name it the same thing as what we originally named it, which was my presentation, and then edited on the end of it. Now you can rename this as something totally different, but it is good to leave edited on there. And if you edit it more than once, maybe you put a two, three, four, so you have your different um, additions there. Now you have the ability to replace the existing video, so the original video will be overwritten by this um, update, or you can save it as a new video. I do encourage saving it as a new video just in case you ever do need to go back to your original, it will be in place. So we'll save as new video. It's actually going to go ahead and process that as a brand new video, so it will take a couple minutes to do so. But it's going to return us to our main media library area where we can see our original as well as our edited video. So here's our original, and then here is our edited. Notice it has edited on the end, which was kind of a default save there. Um, notice that one is still processing, so we will need to give it a few moments. Now that our video has loaded, we're going to choose more, and then we'll be able to see on the side the different options for the video. So under actions, we can choose to duplicate the media. If maybe I want to make another edit or some additions to um, the video, I can make a copy of it to continue to edit. If needed, I can completely delete the media. Under general, I can change the title of it, um, or I can choose put in tags or add in documents that should be linked to the video. Under thumbnails, I can pick an additional thumbnail or I can upload a thumbnail. We'll come back to links in a minute because this is where we're going to actually get our link to share the video. Under downloads, this is where you can download a copy of your uh, video as an MP4 or, and save it on your computer. And then the analytics is where you can see how many people have viewed your video. And then under accessibility is where you can upload captions, but captions will automatically be generated for uh, your video after it has been uploaded. So at this point, we want to go back to links, and this is where you're going to get the video link to share with your peers. So you would get this direct link and copy it, and notice it's going to say gordonstate.uja.com, and this is going to link that you're going to share with um, put into the D2L discussion, the assignments area, or whatnot to share with your peers. Keep in mind that this video link is not the same as the link here at the very top, which is your media library link. If it says media library in it, it is not the correct link. It's going to be this one here under the, when you choose the specific video and choose more, and then under links, this is going to be the link to the video you're going to use. 
Now you can choose to put on some security settings for your video if you like and you can do that under security settings. For the most part you're going to leave this video public. Um, you may or may not choose to put in specific um, restrictions by default if you just have that link and you paste it in then anybody with that link can view it. You can choose to make it password restricted to where they have to um, put in a password but of course you would have to provide what that password is or you can choose to make it to where they have to use their single sign on access their Gordon email username and password to view um, your video. That's going to be the only security setting that you'll ever really want to put on your videos because these other ones can make it much more restricted and potentially um, inhibit others from seeing your video. So you may not want to put a restriction on it at all and just leave it public or you may just want to put a password or, or, or authentication restriction on it. So now we're going to go ahead and get our video link and then we're going to paste that into um, our area in D2L to submit. So we're going to go to our content area and just like you would submit to a discussion area. You would just click on the discussion area and you would start a um, thread. You would input your um, title and then you can just paste in your video here. Then you would post it and then others would just be able to click on that link and it would open right up to view the video that we just created. Notice when viewing the video, the student has options to move this part around just in case it's blocking different parts of the video. They can choose to flip it to where the, the webcam is the main screen and the, um, the screen is the smaller one. Or you can choose to uh, look at different views to where they're equal or one is taking precedence um, or you have multiple screens here looking at your video, your um, area, or your table of contents. When playing the video, notice that closed captions will appear down here at the bottom. We can also choose the second link and it will allow us to see the different bookmarks that we put into place and we can click on those to jump to different parts of the video with the bookmarks. Or I can choose to search certain words in the video. And by doing so, it'll jump to parts of the video that have that word um, included in that part. So similar, if you needed to submit your video link to an assignment area, you would do the same thing. Go to the content area, find the assignment link. And in this case, you could open a Word document, paste in your link, save that Word document, and then just upload that Word document into your assignment area. Something that might help out is if you also post it in the comment area just for quick access and then you would submit that right into D2L so that the teacher will be able to click on this link and just like before it'll open the video for them to play. So that is how you can create a Yuja video either straight through D2L or from the Yuja um, website. Um, how you can edit your video, add in bookmarks if you like, as well as get the link and submit it into Brightspace by D2L.